just do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Yep. Okay, well, we're joined by Iowa head coach Lisa Bluter, Kate Martin, and Caitlin Clark. We'll open with a opening statement from Coach Bluter before we take questions for the student athletes. I just want to congratulate Maureen and Holy Cross on a really great season. Um, you know, they've spent a lot of time here in Carver, and they've spent as much time in Carver this week as we have. Um, and I think they've really enjoyed their time in Iowa City. Um, they're just a really tremendous group of people. Uh, I thought they were very fundamentally sound. They worked really hard and um, really, you know, it was just a, a great first round opponent. Um, tonight, you know, I thought our first quarter we showed a little rust, uh, but I think we got it going a lot better in the second quarter. Um, I love that we controlled the boards. Uh, assists were really good. Four people in double figures. Uh, I thought uh, Addie O'Grady came on off the bench and did some really nice things for us. All right, thank you, Coach. Questions for the student athletes? Hello, this is Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This is for Caitlin Clark. You were injured early, it looked like, got hit in the head. Um, how did you recover from that? And uh, did it impact you at all during the game or did you just shake it off? Um, honestly, like, she, it was just kind of a stinger to the nose. I was lucky it wasn't anything worse than that, but um, yeah, it didn't really bother me too much. I think you just kind of respond, nice to have two free throws and then run a play, but um, I don't, obviously it look, looked kind of bad in slow-mo, but it wasn't on purpose. I don't, she didn't do that on purpose. So she came up and said, sorry, but, uh, honestly, I'm totally okay. Chad. Uh, Chad Leistico, Des Moines Register. Caitlin Clark, please. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't have to say my last name, guys. It's okay. <laughs> um, it's, it seemed like maybe even a little more than usual. You were a little bit frustrated with yourself tonight. Would you mm -hmm. say that's accurate? And um, like, how did you kind of calm things down? You end up with 27, eight and 10 after, <laughs> after all that, you know? Yeah, I would say I was, I probably could have smiled a little more tonight. Um, I think the first quarter kind of frustrated maybe all of us in a way. I feel like this is a game you want to come out and dominate from the start because this is what fuels your run. And um, like Coach Butter said, I think maybe we played with a little bit of rust. And I think the biggest thing is like, they really packed the paint. They just sat four people in there. So it's really hard to drive to the basket. And then when you miss a few, Long shots to start, it's kind of like what, what you do. But I think, like Coach Bluter said, is like we really started running our offense in the second quarter. And then, um, you know, I was able to create some, some plays for my defense that turned into offense, especially late in the game. And then just tried to bring more energy. But, yeah, I think I was a little frustrated. But I feel like that comes from knowing what it takes to be where we want to be. Um, I think, you know, from here on out, every single team is going to give us a really good game. Every single team is basically a top 25 team at this point. So, um, that's what makes March so fun. I definitely think I could have smiled a little bit more, but hey, I'm competitive. I want to win, and I expect us to be really good all the time. Hello. Remy Vorano for the French TV, Canal Plus. <laughs> Question for Caitlin. Um, this is my first time in Iowa City. I've seen Welcome. so many people. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> I've seen so many people uh, saying that you, you are beyond basketball already, that you are a role model for their kids, whether they're boys or girls. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, so many 22 jerseys also. How do you explain this new dimension that you've taken over the last months now? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you feel it like a responsibility? Yeah, I think it's something you never get sick of is seeing somebody wearing your jersey, especially all those little girls and little boys that are screaming for your autograph. And I feel like the city has really embraced our team uh, more than anybody. The state has really embraced our team and they love our team to death. And um, that's what's made it so fun. That's what this journey has really been all about is, you know, people really rallying around us and sharing in these moments and this joy with us. And I think that's been super special, not only from our, for myself, but even like Kate and Gab and, you know, Sharon who have been here and, um, you know, are moving on uh, after these four years. So, um, I don't think, I don't really see it as a, you know, something that's the spotlight's always on me. I think it's my responsibility to, you know, inspire people, but I think that just comes with how I live my life and, you know, how I go about my daily business. It's not anything I'm trying to do. It's just the person I am. And that's kind of what comes along with it. So for the people who doesn't know you, know you yet, who are you, Caitlin Clark? Oh, on and off the holy court. Holy cow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> we could go anywhere. You can Google that one. You just Google it. Get your answers. Even, even for the French people? Even for the French people, I guess. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Jeff. Mike runs right behind you. 
Uh, yeah, Jeff Linder, Cedar Rapids Gazette, Kate. Um, just how would you say this team played uh, considering 12, 13 days off? Mm -hmm. And uh, just tell us a little bit about it, Addie's uh, impact for you tonight. Yeah, uh, a lot of people came in off the bench and played really well for us. Addie, seven for nine, so we were really proud of her tonight. But yeah, I think we had to knock some rust off a little bit, but I think kudos to Holy Cross. They came in here and they played really competitive, competitively. And good, they're a good shooting team, so you can never really you know, discount good shooting teams. So kudos to them, but yeah, we knocked a little bit of rust off and we had a good second quarter that really separated us. And so um, obviously, like Caitlin said, we have high expectations for ourselves. So, you know, we're not super pleased with every single quarter. I think, you know, our defense wasn't fully there for three of our quarters, but um, knocking rust off. And at this time of the year, it's survive in advance. So um, I'm proud of uh, the way we responded in a lot of situations tonight. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Question for you, Kate. Um, you know, obviously, you guys have talked about knocking off some of the rust after that mm -hmm. first quarter. Uh, as you're, you're one of the vocal leaders on this team, is there anything that you said to the team? What was kind of the, the message there after the first quarter? And then the second part, how, how's the head? It looked like you took a, a tough fall there. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't really say anything too inspiring, honestly. I think we all kind of knew what needed to be done, and it was our defense. And uh, we responded really well in the second quarter. Um, but yeah, it. We're, we also keep talking about, you know, we only have one more game left in Carver now, too. So um, this was one of two games left for us seniors here in Carver. And so trying to enjoy every single moment. And, you know, that puts things in perspective for us. But um, yeah, I think my head's fine. I just have a nice little goose egg out back there. How do I look? Mm, horrible. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Scott. I have nothing to add to that one. but. Uh, <laughs> Gabby Marshall hit a couple of three-pointers early. The first one, the, the sentence sounded like the roof was going to collapse. Yeah. What was that? How did that help you uh, as a team? Just kind of, you know, give you a little bit of a breather, and then how did that impact you going throughout the game? Just a couple of her three-pointers. Yeah, I can go. Go first. ahead, Kate. Yeah, when Gabby's on, it's mm -hmm. just it really like lights a fire under all of us. Honestly, when she's hitting her shots and playing with passion, and you know just sticking her tongue out or like cheering it, it really lights a fire under all of our butts. So um, when Gabby's hitting, it's it's really fun for us. And uh, when you see one go through the net and it was her first shot and our first points, then, you know, makes her contagious. So um, it was really good to see that out of Gabby and I've watched Gabby march all. So it's been really fun for her. And uh, I've been loving seeing her knock down some shots continuing over from the Big Ten tournament. Any further questions, Chad? Caitlin, um, you guys are up 23-21 after the first quarter, and almost instantly it felt like you guys are up almost 20. Like, mm -hmm. can you speak to how fast you guys are able to make runs and why how that happens for you guys? I think that's one of the best parts of this team is like, we always are in a game no matter what situation it is. Obviously that situation is a little bit different, but I think that just speaks to our offensive firepower. And when we're able to string stops together, that's when our offense really thrives. When we get out in transition, I think, we got a few stops in there in transition. I think we made a three, and then I know Addie ran the court and got a layup, and then it forced the other team to call a timeout. Um, so I think, you know, it just speaks to our offense, but it really honestly for us starts on defense. And I think when we're able to string stops together, you know, that's when we're really able to execute. I know we kind of sent them, sent them to the foul line a lot, especially there in the first half. It felt like there were a lot of dead ball situations where we weren't really able to push the ball. So I think when we, we get stops, that leads to our best offense, which is transition offense, and that's what we want to get to. Okay, thank you, Kate and Caitlin, and you, uh, you are dismissed. You are dismissed. <laughs> okay, we'll go to questions for Coach Bluter, right here in the front first. Yeah, Michael Vopel from ESPN.com. Coach, um, could you tell us what was up with Hannah not playing in the second half, and, and are you concerned at all about Monday, or...? With her, she didn't feel well, and it just wasn't worth putting her in there when we didn't have to have her. And so, just trying to save her for Monday. And um, I thought, like again, Addie went in and did a great job. We were 11 for 16 with our center positions um, tonight, which is uh, pretty good. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. I, I think a lot of people just expect the one seed to come in and, and handle the 16 seed pretty easily. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts from, from beginning to end, how you feel like your team played today. Is, is this a performance that, that you're happy with going into Monday? 
you know, I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, I'm not going to ever complain about a 26-point victory. Uh, of course, the first quarter, I thought we were a little bit rusty, as I said, but I thought we got it going after that. And, I mean, our three-point defense was really good, and that was a key for us was three-point defense. I thought we did a great job with that. I thought we did a really good job on the boards. We got great point, paint points, uh, took advantage of some of those things. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> Jed? Uh, Coach, uh, Jeff Linder, Sea Rapids Gazette. Uh, we, we talked about those little runs you had there in the first half. Um, the first one came, I think you were down 11-10, and when I went, scored 10 in a row with Caitlin on the bench. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about that, uh, that run there? Yeah, you know, sometimes our offense, we, we just pass the ball a little bit better um, when Caitlin is off the, on the bench. And so I thought you saw that tonight. I thought our you know, team really moved well. They cut hard. Um, and it's really comforting to know that if Caitlin is on the bench that we can still score really well. Um, and I thought some other people really stepped up in that situation. Right behind you, Mike. Oh, Tegan, in front of you. Here we go. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike Colossi, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Lisa, uh, I'm watching this maybe through the eyes of the Holy Cross team, but I didn't see any intimidation, any fear, mm -mm. and some good ball. Uh, mm -hmm. Where does that come from? For Holy Cross? I know you'll have to ask Maureen that because I think she'll be in here next, right? Yes. Um, but, I mean, they're a gutsy group, and it comes from Maureen. I mean, Maureen is uh, – I mean, she, she co or coached um, or played at Marist uh, for Red Fox there. I mean, he's a great coach, and I think she's such a good fundamental coach. I mean, their team played very well. They only had 13 turnovers tonight. Um, they weren't intimidated at all. I think it helped them being in Carver for such a long time this week. But certainly, um, they were not, I think, intimidated by our crowd or anything. I, I thought they just enjoyed the experience, and that's what you want to do. As a 16 seed, that's what you have to do. And they got, a, they got a great win in the NCAA tournament the other night. Next question, other questions? Towards the back there. Cooper worked with the Daily Island <clears throat> coach. I know heading into tournament play, um, a big concern was kind of the, how the backup post players were going to perform some of the inconsistencies you mentioned. Um, of course, Aston O'Grady had a big game. Uh, I guess and some of the other posts. I guess what are your thoughts on some of the backup post players' performance today? Yeah, I had Addie O'Grady put the Iowa sticker up today because I thought she came in and played that well for us. I mean, she's seven for nine from the field, you know, has five rebounds, 14 points. Um, I thought she did a good job. I think AJ came in and did some nice things. Sharon, obviously, in a, a really small amount of time, you know, has five points for us. So 11 for 16, again, and 40 paint points is, is very, very good. Further questions? Raise your hand. Anyone? Hello, Coach, uh, for the French TV still. Um, it's just a question about Caitlin. You've seen her grow up over the, over the last years. Um, did you imagine she would become um, someone so important on and off the court for the, for the whole sports? I don't think you can ever imagine what has happened with Caitlin on a national level. I, I just don't. Like, I, I mean, I could sit here and say, oh, yeah, I knew she was going to be this great. But you know, you, whenever you recruit somebody, you, you have great optimism for them. You think they're a great player. That's why you recruit them. Could you predict at this level of success? No. I mean, no way. And the popularity, obviously, is, is something that's quite amazing. And social media helps with that, television exposure, getting to the national championship last year. Um, you know, being on national commercials doesn't hurt, you know, your popularity. Um, so, you know, she deserves it. She's a great representative of women's basketball on the national level. So she sent me on, on Google, but I prefer to ask it to you directly. Who is she? What are her qualities on and off the court as a player and as a person? I mean, she's the ultimate competitor. I mean, she's upset with a 26-point you know, victory tonight. She's a, you know, not real happy with the way she played. She's just the ultimate competitor. Um, I mean, she's a great kid, too. She's tremendous in the classroom. She's a tremendous role model. She wants to spend as much time as physically possible with young kids. Um, you know, I, I continue to be impressed with her uh, and her abilities, not only in the court, but just the type of young lady she is off the court. All right. Any other questions? Thank right. you. Thank you, Coach. <clears throat>